I think I'm addicted to crack cocaine. I hope everybody is doing fantastically well today. Now, I know you've seen my exceptionally long answers and questions video, and we're not here to be that long today. Oh, thank the Lord, little sisters. Thank the Lord, little sisters. But we do got some questions to answer, because in my community section, and again, there's only three of you, where are the rest of my tubies? Where did you all go? I need you to come back, okay? I need you to come back, come back. Come back to the preacher man, come back to the queen. I am the only witch worth watching. Just kidding. There's a few other witches worth watching, but we're not here to talk about them because they got their own things going on. I love all of the witches except for a few. And I love all of my tubies, okay? Every one of you, even the haters, okay? Even even the haters who have channels, who like to throw a little shade, spill a little tea, and have a messy time on the internet. Now, speaking of messy times on the internet, we're gonna answer some of these questions. This video is gonna be short. Thank the Lord for that, okay? So, the first question is, is there an area of your craft that you have delved into that have never delved into? Forgive me, Jesus Christ, Lord save me. Is there an area of your craft that you have never delved into but are interested in? Well, it's not particularly a part of my craft because I don't think that it would be a part of my craft if I've never delved into it. But who do? Hoodoo is an area of the craft in general. Did she say my craft? No, she said of the craft. Oh, I need to learn how to read, okay? It's early, I'm tired, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So an area of the craft, hoodoo. Hoodoo is an area that I am interested in. I like it, I think it's, fascinating. Um, I personally probably wouldn't practice it because I don't think that I would be allowed to practice it. Right? So I am working on something to educate my tubies in hoodoo a little bit based off of my research. It's going to be a research series. Mm hmm But I don't know when that's coming, so you just need to relax. But Hoodoo for me is a fascinating subject. It is kind of like traditional witchcraft mixed in with African folklore and African traditions that have been whitened, if you will. So the slaves brought over their traditions and they had to you know, disguise their deities and their gods and goddesses and, and, and all of that fun stuff. And uh, they disguised it as saints, so a lot of hoodoo is working with saints. And there's another reason I wouldn't go and, and make hoodoo a part of my craft, because I've worked with the saints. It wasn't fun times. The saints are very much, we're only going to help you when you are super super, super desperate, okay? And I just, I don't work that way, okay? If I need something now and I'm not super, super desperate, mm, girl, you need to get off your ass and do it for me because I have petitioned you, I have given you my offerings, I have done the things that I need to do in order for you to help me, but that was my experience with the saints. They don't want to help you unless you are super, super desperate. Now, I have cleaned this altar. I have cleaned the cloth. I have cleaned the table. Everything is fabulous and beautiful, and I'm just holding on to a candle here. Um, all of that fun stuff. But hoodoo is an area that interests me because there is a lot of similarities in traditional witchcraft. Uh, the biggest one is the honey jar. So the honey jar in hoodoo is... We all know what a honey jar is, right? You put honey in, you put your petition in, you know, you're attracting something to you. You could use a honey jar in cursing. You want to attract them, get them stuck, and then burn them. Um, 
I mean, who says you can't do that, right? I mean, is it a Facebook group that says you can't do that? Honey, you need to get off the Facebook groups. So that is an area of the craft that I am interested in learning more about, but probably wouldn't apply it to my own craft. Uh, mostly because I work with demons, I work with Morgon, um, my craft is more traditional in, in a lot of ways. I don't do the big fancy elaborate spell setups and, and take pictures of candles that are burning down towards fake paper money that looks like it's going to be set on fire because they use 850 different herbs and it's piled sky high. I'm sure you've seen those pictures, right? Um, let's see, what's the next question? You work from home, so that means you probably don't get out as much. I never leave my house. Ever. I never, ever leave my house. I'll go for walks. I'll go to, um, we have a small town to the west of us called Brad Creek, and it's got, that's where you guys see a lot of the nature videos for, like, the grimoire and stuff like that, is because it's from that area. There's lots of hiking trails out there. It goes deep into the woods, goes deep into the hills, and I really like being out there because it helps to recenter, rebalance, clear my head if I'm stuck on a problem for work or just in general, you know, going out there for a good hour-long hike and then hitting up the pub afterwards for some good lunch, you know, that is a great way to relax. I work extra full-time, about 60 to 70 hours a week. Honey, wait, what is full-time? Full-time is 40 hours. I put in about double that, so we're on the same page. Um... So how do you manage to keep sane, practice your craft, be with friends, or even find a boyfriend? I can barely find time to sleep. You don't. <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna, let's, let's talk about mental health for a minute for a lot of those of us who work like a billion hours a week, hundreds of hours a day, trillions of hours in a month, right? Like a little bit dramatic, but you get my point. I tend to put in a lot a lot of overtime. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Can we get this over with? We're not sneezing? Okay. So I put in a lot of overtime in my work. And because I rarely ever leave my house, the company I have is my camera. Hi, how are you? And my kitty cats, which can be get annoying at times. They can be very annoying because these cats always want my attention. Well, Miss Piper is very much like, leave me alone. And Mr. Whiskers is always like, I need attention 24-7, 365 days a week, okay? There aren't 365 days in a week, but you get the point. So, and, and you know, they're getting older. Mr. Goose is going to be 11 years old, and he is still, he's very much like a small kitten. Okay, very much like a small kitten. And Miss Piper is turning seven or eight. I think she's turning eight. And she hasn't showed signs of slowing down. Like, her behavior is still the same. So, there's that. But in regards to having a life... There are days where I will just take a mental health day, and I'm like, I'm not working, I'm not doing anything. I'm going to lay in bed and watch TV, or I'm going to go for a walk, or whatever the case may be. Now, I do leave my house every couple of weeks, because a girl's got to eat, okay? i got to eat. I, I'm, I'm thin privileged, look at my thin privilege, but... I still gotta eat to keep up this figure, right? Like, we can't just be wasting away to bones here. I mean, I'm already bones, but you get the point, right? Gotta have some meat on these bones. Um, but dating, I don't date. I want to, but I don't. Because I meet these people, I go on these first dates, um, I call them like introductions, are you bat, you know, in bat shit crazy, right? That there goes the monetization on this video. But, you know, are you insane? Are you crazy? And, you know, sometimes I'll see them afterwards or, or a third time, but it doesn't go anywhere. 
Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't. And the issue is, is that I'm a 1950s housewife, right? So I like to, I'm old fashioned. I like to do things the old fashioned way. And we all live on our phones and we all live on our social media and our dating apps. And it's not like a gay man can just walk into a grocery store see a man that they like and be like, hi, how are you? You want to go for coffee? You're more than likely to get punched in the face. Like, let's be real, right? Now, in my city, they do have these events where they'll turn straight bars into, like, gay bars for the night. Um, and they're kind of like meet and greet areas where you can go and you can, you can have dinner and you can have drinks and you can meet people and so on and so forth. But those places tend to get overrun by the younger generation that's just looking for a, a good time if you know what i mean and it's like you know my city doesn't really have the best gay scene at all so i'm gonna be 32 this year and i'm gonna die alone and that's okay sometimes you have to accept that you're gonna be the 40 year old woman with the eight dogs who sits at her computer all day and never leaves her house it's sad and it's pathetic but it's just what it is I'm also trying the other reason I don't leave my house very often is because everything costs money everything you step outside of your door and that costs money <laughs> everything costs money your the gas in your car costs money the the going for a hike costs money because hello gas in your car the the having lunch with a friend costs money because hello <laughs> everything in this city in all cities everywhere in the world costs money and i am trying to save as many pennies as i can so i can never to leave my house because if i don't leave my house then i can't spend money now there are things on the internet that i will attain but i feel guilty I feel horribly, horribly guilty for spending any money that isn't on bills or food. I do. I feel guilty. I feel horrible. I think I'm addicted to money. I think money is like crack cocaine. I think I'm addicted to crack cocaine. So, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Next and final question, because again, only three of you, like, hello, I was expecting like 50 questions, but only three of you. Do you listen to podcasts? I'm just going to answer no. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't stand podcasts. I can't stand when people are talking and I am trying to work on something. Now, music. Music, I will listen to music. Music, I can just drift away in. And it doesn't matter if I'm working. doesn't matter what I'm doing. Now, if I'm typing something, if I'm writing a letter or if I'm writing an email, sometimes you have to pause that music because your brain, you know, your thoughts, they get jumbled. and uh, So... Uh, if so, which ones, any of them witchcraft related, do you have a favorite author or go to, uh, or go to book concerning the craft? Books concerning the craft, all of mine are Wiccan based and my go to, if I want to get back to the basics, is Scott Cunningham, uh, Living Wicca. That is my go to book. I did buy the 5,000 spell book, but I don't, it's just sitting here on my altar collecting dust. Like it's literally collecting dust. <laughs> because I don't use it very often. I really don't. Now, I did want to go back to the second question for a second, where they were asking about practicing your craft and how you do that with being so busy and all of that fun stuff. I haven't done anything witchy since the recording of The Craft and The Grimoire. I find that I can go months if, if I didn't upload anything to YouTube, if I didn't have to do a series or, or show you guys how to make something or do anything or anything like that, essentially if I was never on YouTube, my craft would probably be dormant for 20, 30 years. There's nothing to do. Nothing. I mean, name one thing to do in your craft that you could do weekly or daily or monthly. There's a comment section down below. But for me, there's nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. People will talk about, oh, well, you should do your protections every week or whatever. Why? What's the point? No one's coming to my house. 
And none of the witches on YouTube got, you know, any time of day to do anything. It's like, honey, 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 honey. Like, if you're sitting there and you're like, I'm going to curse you, I'm going to hex you, I'm going to do this to you, I'm going to do that to you. Like, you need to sit back, reevaluate the situation and wonder, like, why are you wasting your time? Like, I'm not paying attention to none of that mumbo jumbo that's coming out your mouth. So, mm -mm. so I don't practice my craft very often. I don't call upon the demons or the spirits or the Morrigan. I mean, it's been, what, when did I finish recording the Grim War? Like two months ago? It's been two months I haven't done anything. I'll light incense every now and then, but that's mostly because I love the smell of patchouli or I'm getting nightmares because the spirits are like, hi, you're not honoring us. And I'm like, oh, here is some patchouli. And then they just go away. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> So I don't, I'm not saying that I've given up on my craft or that I'm done with my craft or anything like that. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. There just isn't anything to do. None. Zero. zippity zoo -za. So we were talking about favorite authors and we talked about Scott Cunningham and we talked about Living Wicca. Who is your biggest influence when it comes to a particular type of witchcraft? It used to be tequila, but she's gone. There's no new videos. There's nothing. Gabby manipulated her and she left the platform. I mean, let's be realistic. Now I'm just ripping apart a candle. Um, but it, it used to be tequila. I haven't found another witch that gives me any inspiration whatsoever. I mean, there's the witch of Seaclift, and she's cool, but she's, I don't know, she's more of a show and tell more than a teach and learn, and that's fine, that's her brand of craft. Ravenways was up there until we had a massive falling out, and now she's nothing. <laughs> she just does these charts and, and astrology based stuff that doesn't interest me at all so i don't i don't watch her and i don't watch her live chats anymore either because i feel there's no cohesion there but that's just my opinion that's just my opinion there is no witch on this platform that gives me any inspiration that makes videos and gives me inspiration none and that's no tea no shade no drama it's just what it is so I don't have any inspiration. So I turn to Hollywood fiction, not to become pop culture or think that what they do in Supernatural or Sabrina or the original Charmed is real, but just kind of like to put me in that witchy mood, you know, to make me want to flip through my grimoire, or flip through my 5,000 spell book or, or whatever the case may be. But it just, Nothing really gives me inspiration, and I think that's one of the reasons my craft has come to such a standstill, if you will, is because I'm not inspired the way that I used to be. You know? When tequila was on the platform, there was all kinds of things to be inspired about. And do we have anything in here? Finally, what are some of your plans this year, both craft related and not? So my biggest plan this year is to save money. Save those pennies, save all the money, every piece of penny that I can get my hands on, save it. Save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. Um, in terms of my craft, get inspired again, I guess. <laughs> Um, I do want to start doing some working videos out in nature, and we gotta wait till the summertime because, girl, we gotta wait till it gets warmer out. Ain't nobody gonna go out in minus 40 degree weather and, and do anything, okay? We gotta wait till it's hot and, and um, beautiful and sunny and glorious out, and that's pretty much it. I would love to see new witches practicing their craft and teaching and educating and um, all of that stuff, but I'm just not inspired in my own craft anymore. 
that's just how it is and that's okay sometimes you know you just gotta put one thing down and pick up another thing and then eventually that other thing will want to be picked up again I think the other biggest issue is that and I've talked about this in the past is I was a money witch for the longest time and I could do money spells left right and center and now it's like it's I don't need to do a money spell I just need to learn how to manage my money Right? So we're, we're definitely figuring that out as we go and there's bumps in the road and, and stuff like that. But I think things are going to get better. You know? Things are going to get better. So if you have questions, witchy or non-witchy, there's a comment section down below. I want to hear them. I want to hear all of them. Okay? I want to hear y'all witchy questions. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to hear. So get in that comment section and start typing your witchy and non-witchy questions because you know I will make another video like this. Okay? Until next time, my fabulous little tailbase. <laughs>